My approach to teaching follows my own learning preferences, which I would say is to jump in and try things. So the class is based around immersion and experiential hands-on learning. And by this, I mean we try things. The idea is rather than start with formal definitions and start with formal principles, to simply start working with experimenting with uh, materials and simulations and software and discover them as we go. One uh, manifestation of this is that I will often use words before I define them. The idea is when one is learning a language, it's not simply a matter of memorizing grammar rules or memorizing definitions, but of seeing things in context. So the meaning of a word is built more, I believe, from hearing it in context, using it in context, using it in practice, and seeing how it operates. And then when the formal definition is presented, it makes a lot more sense. This follows my own experience with electronics, where I learned a lot of hands-on experimenting with electronics long before I ever saw theory. And then when I finally saw the theory, it made immediate sense because I had already seen how the devices operated and made lots of mistakes and uh, built lots of experiments along the way. It's a spiral iterative approach to teaching where uh, something is presented to, to test, some circuit is built, and then some measurements are made, and slowly the vocabulary is used to describe what's happening and, and build out toward understanding. But my hope is this leads to very practical education where you're competent both in trying things in the simulation or the lab, but then are also able to do at least the minimal analysis to think about things in a, in a logical, coherent engineering way. I myself am an English speaker. My limited foreign language experience is just that one learns foreign languages in context. One tries phrases and words. And in practice, engineering and programming are both highly idiomat idiomatic. It's not just a matter of applying the principles but of recognizing typical ways of using things. So it's possible to simply reason up toward an understanding from, from first principles, but in practice, there are a number of conventional building blocks that we use. And so starting with the building blocks lets me show you pieces and parts and then work backwards to our theory. If I had to summarize the entire class in a phrase, it would simply be, it's the creative application of systems thinking. I'm a roboticist by training. I think about composite systems that include computing, the physical world, physical behavior, electronic and computational representations of the world in terms of sensing and actuation, and then finding ways to bring them all together. So for example, uh, we might think about a behavior or a process as beginning with some physical system. So it could be a person or a machine or, or a location that uh, impinges on a sensor and causes a change in electrical signals, which is transduced to informational processes in a computer, and then comes back out as additional electrical signals toward actuation, and then closes the loop in the physical world to cause some change. So there could often be traced a continuous process of both information and energy from the physical world through these systems we build and back. And the, the answer is that the, the full system is the outcome it's not simply possible to analyze it in terms of either software or mechanism or uh, electronics. It's, it's the complete cycle and, and system that creates the desired outcome. So thinking more in these terms allows us to partition our solution so that we're trying to make something move, we're trying to get some kind of effect for a person. We can decide, should that be a computational process? Should that be a mechanical process? Where is the best way, where's the easiest way to implement the different kinds of things we want to do? The structure of the class is threefold. We're going to begin with simulation exercises, both in Tinkercad circuits and CAD, meaning Fusion 360, to do more idealized design. Then there'll be a phase where we do lots of hands-on practical exercises using real materials. And then the last part of the semester is project-driven. The, the pace uh, begins with a lot of very hands-on scripted exercises and then ends with very open-ended creative problem solving and uh, creative design. Somewhere along the way, we'll introduce collaboration. There will be some amount of collaborative work in the exercise phase, and then the projects will be entirely collaborative. And uh, we'll find ways of uh, bringing people together to do uh, productive uh, mergings of interests uh, to make these projects. 
This semester, of course, there's a new feature of working remotely. Obviously, the first element is this video lecture. This is the first semester I've attempted to do any sort of asynchronous video content, so I'll be learning a lot as I go about how to do this. Part of the goal is that the actual class sessions, which will also be remote, should be shorter. I'd rather keep them to the active collaborative discussion and the kinds of activities which need all of us together. And so uh, we won't be needing the full class period for most classes. There may be some review days or presentation days where we will use the entire time. But generally, I'll try to limit the amount of time on Zoom to something manageable. The extra time I can then use for discussion or office hours on, on an ad hoc basis. And we will kind of see how that progresses. The collaborative learning will be harder, I think, this way. But we will find ways to link people across distance and find ways to share things across distance uh, to make the collaborative aspects still work, even though we're, we're remote. Some students may have uh, physical presence. It's I've reserved the laboratory in the basement of Hunt Library, the physical computing lab, during class hours to be available to us. It's not uh, essential to the class to be there, although it will open up some different uh, resources and avenues. Um, those students who are also on campus uh, may be able to qualify for laser cutter use, although access is extremely limited this semester and the rules are constantly evolving. So it just isn't clear yet how much we'll have, but that will be a, a second, second possibility for students on campus. For everyone, there's going to be a course kit. Normally there are materials distributed with the course that are distributed in person, and then the entire lab is available for borrowing uh, equipment. This semester, we have selected a set of parts, which I'm attempting to provide as a complete minimal set for building projects wherever you are in the world. It, the idea is that uh, we should not depend upon the, the presence of physical tools or the laboratory in order to do creative projects. The ideas of the class transcend any given material. So I do believe that we can still be creative in this space, but it's gonna require quite a bit of innovation on our parts to find ways to build things at home. If you are on campus, there obviously are tools and things available that you, you may give you a, a different kind of outcome than those who are working wherever they happen to be with whatever they have on hand. Um, we'll figure this out together. There's going to be quite a bit of, of learning how to make this work.